Hello and welcome to today's Wednesday in the Word. As you can see, we're back in the Kennedy household today. A little bit noisy in the background, but that's okay. It's just the busyness of life in the community around us. Today, we're focusing upon the next in our series of Words for the Wise. And specifically today, we're looking at something which Coach Wooden refers to as poise. Uh, this is how he defines that. He says it is just being yourself, being at ease in any situation, never fighting yourself. Now, Wooden goes on to talk about how this essentially is a composite of a lot of the things which we've talked about already as we've been thinking through these themes from the book of Proverbs and how they're realised for us in the Lord Jesus Christ. And in many respects, uh, the composition of what he's talking about today is made up of two aspects, self-control and confidence. We'll talk a little bit more about confidence next week. But one of the things I've been thinking about as I've been considering this whole issue is what does it mean for each of us to be comfortable in the skin that God has put us in? What does it mean for us to live with him as Lord of our lives, recognising that that is always a tension between us wanting to live for him and sometimes wanting to live to please other people. So Proverbs 29, 25 talks about this very issue. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. Now that might seem very obvious to us. When we put our trust in the Lord, then we're safe. But notice how this proverb works. The tension that's being created here is between whether we're going to live with fear of man or whether we're going to put our trust in the Lord. Will we fear the Lord? Sometimes people refer to fear of man as people pleasing. And of course, that's a huge authority in so much of our thinking in our society today. What will other people think of me? So many of us depend upon how many likes we get for our posts on social media, for example. That's a symptom of fear of people, perhaps. You need to consider this as well. When are you putting your fear and your trust in other people rather than your fear and trust in the Lord? When perhaps are we more scared to say things for fear of offence or fear of trying to keep on the good side of someone rather than being obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ? Of course, if Jesus is Lord, then the implication is therefore that we can trust him with all of the things which concern us. And indeed, in the book of Colossians, for example, we see the key verses I would suggest in the book highlighting the truth that when we put our trust in the Lord, then we grow. We grow in confidence in him and therefore, by implication, we're able to be the people the Lord wants us to be. We're able to have that kind of poise that John Wooden talks about. Here are those verses from Colossians 2. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Beautiful picture language there, isn't there, about how we are to recognise that Jesus Christ, he is the Messiah, he is also our Lord, he is the one alone who has died for us risen from the dead for our sin. The fact that he is vindicated by God and now is seated in the place of complete authority. We can trust in him for absolutely everything. And Paul says here to continue in him. We are now counted in Christ. That's a status system and a circumstance for us, spiritually speaking. We are now in his kingdom. Those are all ideas from the book of Proverbs. Point being, we're now part of his family. And the encouragement here is to be what you've already become. Be comfortable in the skin that God has rescued you into in Jesus Christ, rooted in him, built up in him, strengthened in the faith in him as you've been taught and overflowing with gratitude, with thankfulness. Think about all of those different aspects. Rooted in Christ. Where are your foundations? Are they in the opinions of other people? Are they in your own opinion? Or are they in Christ Jesus? Where are you building your life? 
On whom are you building your life? What are you building for? Is it for Christ or is it for other things? Make sure that we are strengthened in him each day, coming back to his word, listening to things like Wednesday and the word, growing in our faith, making sure we're coming to church when we possibly can, encouraging other believers, praying for them as they pray for us, and overflowing with thankfulness. A very dear friend of mine, Dave, uh, has three boys. And one of the things I remember him telling me, which he said to me as a dad, which he struggled with, Christian kids. And yet one of the things which he as a father struggled with was the fact that oftentimes these kids forgot to say thank you. Now, many of us as parents can identify with that. That's not having a go or a dig at kids unnecessarily. But how much more as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ ought we to be those who every day come to him with gratitude in our hearts for the very air we breathe, for the very fact that we can know God in our lives, that we can continue with him as Lord, graciously confident, built up in him, strengthened in the faith as we've been taught, overflowing with thankfulness. Can I encourage you today, as I encourage myself, to keep walking with Jesus Christ as your Lord. That's how we are going to have the poise that John Wooden talks about. A very dear friend of mine, Harold, uh, he's gone to heaven now, uh, said to me many years ago, Chris, as you enter into ministry, be yourself. Don't try and be someone you're not. Uh, what he was highlighting was the truth that as Jesus works in me, so he is able to make my personality the way he wants it to be. And so I'm able to thrive under his authority and recognise that this is how I grow and can encourage other people for his glory's sake. Can I encourage you to do just the same today? Let's pray together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this time together. Thank you for your word. Please would you help us to continue with Christ as Lord. Perhaps if we've never submitted to Jesus as our Lord, would you help us to do that just right now? And help us, Lord, to continue with him, to walk in him, strengthened in the faith as we've been taught, built up, overflowing with thankfulness. We hear, Lord, busy people behind us. We recognise, as we hear that, the reminder that you've given us work to do. So help us, Lord, today to do the good works that you've prepared in advance for us to do. And as we do it all, help us to do it all for your glory. Amen. Well, from a very noisy Siderton, have a great day. God bless you.